up, baby? It's your boy YG, richest poor person on YouTube. And in today's video, I'm gonna be talking to you about how I bought this house behind me for less than $11,000 in the middle of this pandemic, riots, and all this stuff. Bought it without a bank, a month closing. Let's get into that. Now there's a lot to unpack. Um, and I'll walk you through the entire process from beginning to the end because a lot of t people tell you uh, you should do this and do that but they don't tell you exactly how they did it or how to do it so in this video I'll go over that with you let's get started but first if you're new to this channel hit that subscribe button and the notification bell so you don't miss out on any future videos so I'm gonna tell you the whole story from beginning to end on how I bought that property during these crazy times without using the bank with a month closing for less than $12,000. So first, how did I find a property? So I was in the direct mail campaign where I would find properties that um, I would like to purchase just randomly, like driving for dollars or like on, the, on Zillow or something like that. And I would find the property owners and their address and I would send them a postcard with my information saying that I would like to buy their house. But in one particular situation, I couldn't find the guy's address and I could only find his phone number online. Um, long story short, I got in contact with his son and I got in contact with the guy and the guy said um, he wasn't interested in selling the property I was looking at, but he had something else in Macon, an Aplex, um, that he was interested in selling. So it was his son's deal. He bought the property for his son. Um, but that's not really important. So I had a contractor come out and look at the Aplex. And this contractor told me that he had a couple properties that he was selling and he was willing to own and finance it. So the guy selling the Aplex did not like my offer and denied it. So I called the contractor back and I was like, yo, what's good, bro? I didn't say that, but well, I asked him to see the list of properties that he was selling. So I came across this one property a uh, three bed, two bath, selling for 45K, and it was currently rented out, and I was interested in it. So I put in an offer, um, I gave him his purchase price of 45,000, I was gonna put 25% down and have it financed over five years with a $500 payment a month, and it got accepted. It's a wraparound mortgage, which means that he already has an existing mortgage on that house, but the mortgage he has is like a whole bunch of properties lumped into one. So it's a wraparound owner finance deal that I was able to get for 25%. Since he's acting as the bank, I'm paying him directly $500 every month for the next 60 months. I didn't need to use the bank because I don't need to borrow any money because he's acting as the bank. So that's what an owner finance deal is and a wraparound mortgage. If you have any questions about what those are more specifically, let me know in the comments below. So the property needs some renovations, which I'm currently doing now. I just recently, yesterday I finished replacing a part of the roof. It took me three days and it was the first time I did it and I did it by myself. So I had some videos up about that, but it's currently rented out. I'm, I get those tenants a 60 day notice, so they're gonna have to get out of here so I can finish fixing up the property. Um, and I plan to rent it out for $900. So once the note is paid off in five years and I own it outright, $900 a month for the rest of my life, and I'm just gonna start stacking from there. Um, just gonna continue the process and keep doing it over and over again until I die, I guess. Crazy thing about this property, so it's listed as a three bed, two bath, but when I did the inspection and I walked through, there's actually four bedrooms and two baths. So that's kind of exciting. Hopefully I can get a higher rent for it. It's in a good neighborhood, nice little location in Macon and I like it it's not too big it's not too small um, there's some like plumbing issues that I have to get a plumber out here to fix um, and some other things where I need some specialty guys to come out here and help me with but for the most part I'm gonna be fixing up this property by myself once I start my electrician job and I'm a couple years in with my with my knowledge I'll replace the house's electrical systems because they're really old and there's a 100 amp panel which is old and out of date so uh, when the time comes I'll replace it with a 200 amp panel and all the wiring and stuff like that the house has washer and dryer hookups and uh, it's a nice little property for me to get started well not get started because I have a property already but it's a nice little property for me to get started doing the renovations myself in that aspect of it so how did I get it for less than 12,000 so like I said I put 25% down um, so 45,000 divided times 25% is like $11,250 or something like that. I'm not sure if my math is right. 
but I was credited the rent and the security deposit. The rent is currently $750. The security deposit is currently $750. So I was credited $1,500. So take that 25% down payment plus the closing cost, which is like $1,200. I was supposed to pay like $12,500 or something like that. Subtract 1500 from that and I paid less than $11,000. So that's how I bought the house for less than $11,000 without using the bank It was a month closing. Um, it was pretty easy pretty simple. I was directly talking to the seller and um, Yeah, $500 a month. What's that for the next five years compared to the rest of my life getting these rents starting at $900 and rents always go up They always rise because of inflation and all this stuff. They don't really go down so uh, this is the second property that I have in my portfolio and I'm looking forward to start getting it fixed up once the tenants move out in 60 days and start building from there. I had to put the work in to find this property. It didn't just fall in my lap and nobody just gave it to me. Like I said, I was sending out postcards, handwritten, stamped myself, easily sent out over 200, just to get less than five phone calls back. Now think about that. I've called numerous amounts of people just to hear no. So rejection is a part of the process, but that didn't stop me. You have to be consistent and determined to make these things happen. I, I was lucky to find this property. He just happened to be a contractor on a property whose owner I stumbled across by a random number on the internet because I was trying to find a guy's address. And I was like, you know what? I can't find this guy's address. Let me just call this random number. And it happened to be the guy's son. So. Put yourself in a situation to get lucky. So be consistent, be determined, and take daily actions towards where you wanna be because nothing's just gonna get handed to you. If you like this video, give me a thumbs up so YouTube shares this video with more people. If you have any questions or anything you want me to go more in depth about, let me know in the comments below. I'm out, peace.